Well, hello everybody. It seems like these days, anytime I have a tenant roll over or I buy another property or whatnot, I end up with mowers. I've already sold several of them on Craigslist, just simple carburetor cleaning stuff like that. Last Craftsman mower I sold for 150 bucks. The only thing I did to it was clean the carburetor, like I said, give it a bath. Well, I've got this Yard Machines 21 inch self propelled here that was left by a recent tenant and it was kind of in pieces so something happened to it I guess he tried to fix it and was unsuccessful and it was left behind it is missing the breather and the breather cover or the filter the carburetor bolts were out it was just kind of hanging loose the muffler was just kind of hanging loose I tried to diagnose it over there because if I didn't think it was going to run I was going to set it on the curb for the scrappers but I was kind of limited in my tools and things I didn't have any fresh fuel so let's get into this thing and see will it run it didn't have any carriage bolts in the handle I just found these laying on the garage floor over there just to stick them in temporarily this one's kind of tweaked I'll hammer it but that's only if it's going to run I'll find some carriage bolts and just put washers and nuts on them I don't know the state of the fuel that's in here and my sniffer, I don't have a very good sense of smell at all. So I'm going to suck the gasoline out of it with this contraption I made out of a Harbor Freight brake bleeder. You just start pumping and you can see it will fill it up. I'm only doing this primarily so I don't make a mess in here. So I'll get this sucked out and then we'll check it to see if there's any water in the fuel. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and check it for spark even though I did it on location. Hopefully this will show up on the camera. I've just got a jumper wire here just holding it. So here we go. Alright, well I've seen it's definitely got spark. I misspoke. I said that this muffler was loose. That's not true. It was actually all the way on the other side of the garage. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and show you something I thought was interesting. This cover does have this tab broken off right here, but that's no big deal. If I can get on it. It's not the right size. Bear with me. All right, here we go. I got the right size now. All right, you see the back of this muffler here, the way it's belled up like this? There's nothing in here like for a gasket. I would expect it to have like an exhaust gasket, but it does not have one. And I looked at the parts breakdown online, and it doesn't appear that there is one at all. But this, I guess that would seal it up, but it just feels like there should be something there. I don't see any leakage from it, at least at that standpoint. But, if anybody knows the answer to that, let me know. But we'll, if it fires up, we'll check it for leaks. All right, well, I've released the rope, so I'm going to zip this cover off real quick. That's so I can get the tank off and have better access to the carburetor. All right, well, I'm going to start removing the carburetor and the fuel tank. It was missing one screw. I couldn't find it in the garage. So... I did find this one on the floor that was usable, so I put it in there. Got just a couple to take out here. I think three more. It's kind of difficult to work around the camera. It's right in front of me.
So that's that part. Try to sneak in here and get to the fuel line, get it off the clamp that is. And lift up on this tank. It's got some tabs that go down into some notches. I may lose a little bit of fuel, but we'll see. Maybe I can just pull that all as one unit. Pretty sure this carburetor just snaps off. Yep. Get rid of this. There we go. Let's see if I can get that off there. <clears throat> well, that's on there. I'm going to have to do this out of camera view. I can't get my leverage points on it. Yeah, I was. Okay. Alright, so there's the tank. Now I've got the carburetor. Still got fuel in the bowl. That's why I'm going this direction, because I want to get that out of there. Well, I forgot I was going to do a compression test on it, so I went ahead and put the cover back on so I could do that. Maybe this will show up. I'm going to pull it four or five times, and we'll see what we get. Looks like we've got maybe 70 roundabout. That should work. All right, I'm on the bench now. I thought I saw somewhere a date of maybe 2018 on this mower, so it's really not that old. I'm going to pull the bowl off primarily to have a peek inside and also get that fuel out of there if it does have water in it. I've kind of got this sitting over here in that container to see if it separates out if there's any water. It may be ethanol free, who knows. I'm not familiar with these uh, full plastic carburetors like this. So I'm gonna just kind of help it pry it off and there we go now when I was over there I would uh, depress the primer well, that sure looks like water to me I'm gonna put this in a separate container that looks like pure water I wish I could smell it That right there may be the problem. But anyway, when I depressed the primer, I could see it priming. So it was definitely getting fuel into the cylinder. I definitely had spark. I definitely had air because there was no restriction because there was no air filter. The only other thing it could be, besides this, in my opinion, it should at least try. But it could have had a hit and sheared the flywheel pin. We are going to remove the nut just to make sure it's intact, but that may be the problem right there. Yeah, it's got a little bit of trash in it, a little bit of fuel, but I don't know if you can see it. That's almost just pure water right there. So that's what was in the bowl. It wasn't even trying to hit. I'll give you a quick shot of what's been settling for about, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. You see the coloration in that. I don't see any water settling on this at all. So evidently it just made its way down into the float bowl. That may be all that's wrong with it. I'm not even going to try to take this apart any further. The, uh, well, yeah, I may. This is all plastic. Instead of having the pin slide in, I don't know if it will slide all the way out to get the float and the needle out or you have to click it up over these plastic ears that are holding it but I certainly don't want to break it it looks clean there was a little bit of trash in it but nothing major it will be getting a bath and this white hose barb right here it's got dirt up in the barbs and there's nothing for a hose to connect to 
So I'm not sure exactly what this is. It might be a check of some kind to where it allows, I don't know, air to come in but not out or who knows. Or out but not in. I don't know. If anybody knows about that, let me know. But there's no place for a hose to go on there. And based on how dirty it is, it never had one. But I will clean this up. All right, well, I'm going to pop the flywheel nut off of it here. See if my friend's Ryobi half-inch impact driver will do it. I had to borrow this for him. I don't have any of my types of tools like that over here. So here we go. Well, I didn't even hesitate. <laughs> okay. My whole goal here is not necessarily to have to pop the flywheel, but get down and look and see if this key has been sheared in any way and offset. So let me blow that off and I'll report back what I find. All right, guys. Well, I've inspected the key here. It is not sheared in any fashion, so we're going back together clean these parts up just because get the nut back on here I believe this is supposed to be torqued down to 60 pounds foot pounds I don't have my torque wrench over here so we're gonna go back the way we came off and that's that Alright guys, well I got all the carburetor components cleaned up. I thought this was a check. So air would only flow one way or the other. It seems to be open through here. I do not know what this does. That's what that is. I was able to snap the float out of here and the needle. And I'm glad I did because there was some garbage down in here. So we're going back together. And take the needle and put it where it goes and I think I'm going to go ahead and start this in one side like that drop it down into the hole push it over snap it on this side and then slide it through There we go, about centered. I did not try to take this out. I do not know what's in there. And at this stage, we're down to putting the bowl on. But before I do that, after cleaning, there's a felt washer right here. You see it? I'm going to saturate that with some 3-in-1 oil as we speak. Just like so. And then before I try to put the bowl on, because this is dry right now, I'm going to saturate a Q-tip. And put a little bit of lubrication right here to help this go together. Just like so. This goes on in one direction. This part right here falls down into that part. So that's the way that will go together. Just like so. Try to pop that in. Looks like it's going. Insert and tighten up these screws right here. And we should be good to go. Just taking it down to the surface and same here. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. That should be that. Now where it goes on to the intake side there's an o-ring here that was left on the motor so I will put it right here 
and this should just snap in like so. I am going to put a little film of 3-in-1 on that o-ring and this is ready to be reinstalled. Alright guys, with the carburetor cleaned up, we're going back together with it. I believe I'm going to go ahead and start by putting this hose right here so I don't have to muscle with it later. And we'll slide this on. But before I do that, I've got to get this linkage right up here in this hole. Tilt it. And there we go. It's looking good bring this up and start sending the carburetor in where it goes push this in that should be that I believe I need to get up over it so I can see how to get these tabs right here and here into here that's my goal at the point at this point Got one of them started. There we go. Looking good. At this stage, you cannot see this, so I'm going to move the hose clamp down and get it where it goes. I've cleaned this up. It's going to go this way, making sure that I have this breather tube right there looking good now we'll start fastening this down just getting things started at the moment so I'll go ahead and lock these two in there's one and two changing out my socket go ahead and put this one in down here there we go and then the final one is odd man out as I stated earlier get this one put in and there we go alright well I've reinstalled the plug and the plug wire I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on and cinch it down I think we're going to fuel it up and see what it does there we go now I'll get this pulled out reattached up top and we'll see what happens alright I found a couple carriage bolts cut them to length washer and a nut that took care of the handle on the other side I did have to straighten it out where it was kind of bent no big deal all right guys well I drug it outside the door it's pretty late right now put a little bit of fresh fuel in it I'm gonna prime it two or three times pull it see what happens let's go
All right, guys, well, it's a new day. I've got a clamp on the bail arm up there. I'm going to go ahead and start it back up, let it run for about four or five minutes, and see how it does on a warm start. Here we go. All right, guys, where am I? I lost a lot of clips. It's been a couple of months since I even looked at this thing. So bringing it back up to speed, describing what I'd done. I, of course, washed it. I inspected the belt. I changed the oil. I received and installed the filter, saturated it with oil, put the cover on it. All in all, I'm in for $17, oil and these components. And one of the clips back, I had, was going to do a warm start on it, and I did that. That's one of the clips I lost. I had to prime it to get it to start after it was warm, but I didn't have the filter yet. So we're going to do that test again. Anything else I've done? A couple zip ties. Oh, I, there's no filter uh, gasket that goes right here. That doesn't leak. It's just the way it's made. That was a new one on me. Everything's looking good as far as I'm concerned. Let's uh, put some fresh fuel in it, do a cold start, I'll let it run, and then we'll try a warm start on it. Alright guys, got some fuel in it. It's not run for a couple months like I'd said. I've got the arm down with a clamp. I'm going to fire it up cold, let it run for five minutes or so, and then see if we can do a warm start without priming. Guys, it's been running about five minutes. I just now turned it off. Let's see it will if we can start it without having to prime it. Good to me.